Is your attic properly insulated? Chances are there's some air gaps that could be costing you money. Today I'm going to show you what you need to know about loose fill or blown in insulation. When you think of insulation, you usually think of bat and roll insulation, which is great between joist spaces and stud spaces, or if you have a wide open space or crawl space. However, loose fill works really good in tight spaces, or if you already have a layer of insulation, topping it off. Wood joists allow air to move through the spaces, so they must be covered with insulation. However, if you do go with loose fill insulation, you're going to have to rent a machine. The type of material you're going to use is going to be up to you. The thing you need to look at most is the R value, or resistance to heat flow. The higher the R value, the more resistance. Now, depending on your region or your climate, it's going to determine how much R value you need. The colder the climate, usually is going to mean a higher R value. Fiberglass is a common, budget-friendly insulation material. Cellulose, which is made from recycled paper and treated for fire resistance, packs tightly between the joists. We're going to be using fiberglass for our project. To determine how much insulation you're going to need, you're going to multiply the length times the width of your attic to get the square footage. Then you're going to reference the back of the package to determine the proper height to get the right R value for your project. So when you're working with fiberglass insulation, you're going to want to wear some old clothes or even some disposable coveralls. It's also a good idea to wear a dust mask, safety glasses, a hat, some knee pads, gloves, and a hard hat is helpful for working in tight spaces and around exposed roofing nails. Before installing, you'll need to prep your space. If you have existing insulation that's in bad shape, it's been compressed or has mold on it, remove it and fix the moisture problem. Here's a tip. A piece of plywood across the joist makes a great work surface. Now you'll want to seal all your air gaps. Use spray foam in large gaps around pipes and caulk in smaller spaces around electrical boxes and utilities. For plumbing, consider wrapping any water lines with a pipe sleeve. Also, make sure your bath vents exhaust outside. For roof damage, call a pro. Now around a heater flue, you should create a barrier to hold back the insulation from the hot pipe. Run a bead of high temperature caulk around the pipe, then press a couple of pieces of sheet metal into the caulk and staple them to the joists. Seal around the flue too. Next, cut tabs on a piece of sheet metal and form it around the pipe to create a dam. Finish up by stapling the tabs into place. If you have recessed lights in the ceiling below, check to see if they're rated type IC. If not, you'll need to keep the insulation away from the fixture to prevent a fire hazard. Build a box with drywall and screws to create a three inch space around the fixture and use spray foam along the seams. If you've got skylight passages, be sure to insulate those too. There's several ways to do this. We fill the gaps with batting, then wrap them with unfaced insulation and house wrap. Here's an important step. Install rafter vents at your soffits. Just slide them into place and attach them with the staple gun. The vents allow air to flow from the soffit to the ridge vent, preventing moisture buildup in the attic. Now before laying down any insulation in your attic, it's a good idea to map out any lights or other utilities so you know where they're at in the future. Next, install pieces of wood or rulers at various spots around the attic to gauge the depth of your loose fill insulation. Now before you blow in your insulation, you're going to want to put up a barrier to keep the insulation from falling into areas where you don't want it, like this walk area or down your hatch. We're using a piece of this rigid foam and attaching it with these cap nails. Running a loose fill machine is a two-person job. First, you're going to hook up the hose Feed half a bag of fill into the machine, then turn on the hose to start blowing the insulation. Begin farthest from the hatch, filling the area to the desired depth. Be careful not to spray the rafter vents. Now we still want to use our attic for storage, but since we're adding a second layer of insulation, we're going to have to raise the floor up. Now we're going to build a framework by taking our 2x6s and laying them perpendicular over the existing joists and then screwing the whole thing together. We're then going to screw the entire framework to the existing joists fill the middle with insulation, and then put our sheet of plywood on top of that. Continue working around the attic. To fill next to the barriers, hold your hand over the hose to direct the insulation down. If your attic stair door isn't insulated, add weather stripping to the frame, then attach a piece of rigid foam on the door with adhesive, and cap nails if needed. And now we're done with our attic project. 
If you take the time to do the prep work and add the loose fill, your home's gonna be more comfortable and energy efficient. Now for more great ideas and how-tos, go to lowes.com slash how-to.